Hey guys, so a few days ago I found this self-rotating automatic following selfie stand at action for 10 euros and thought okay this will just be connected via Bluetooth to your smartphone and then the smartphone will say where to rotate to. Quite quickly, even inside of the store, I saw it's different. So you have this small dot here in the lower section and as you can see, it works quite well, but I can also stop it by holding my hand up and it will not follow me anymore. But by showing this an appropriate sign in some languages, we can make it follow us again. So let's take a look inside on how it works and what's inside and yeah, what makes this tech go. Inside of this base, we do have like a stepper motor in the bottom, but also a camera, as you can see here. And it's not at all connecting wirelessly to anything. It will just use its own camera to follow the face it detects in the room. And we can stop it by holding our hand up. Then the light turns red and we can start it again by showing this other sign when the light is green again and then it will yeah continue to follow us it's quite yeah neat that it's so advanced and for just 10 euro even includes the battery inside okay so let's take a look inside of the self-rotating gimbal stand whatever so first of all it has this uh, eight millimeter screw in the bottom like this standard camera mount thing and also comes with this extra enlargement for it. And where we want to open it is also the button. We have this Phillips screw inside. Ah, and also charging is done from the side here with USB-C. To open it up now, we will use one of the secure screwdrivers. They sent both of these to me and we will take a look at them as well. It's for once this, yeah, um, simpler version and the other one here is this advanced version which also features an OLED screen and yeah, I like them quite a lot, um, especially as this yeah more advanced version also has USB-C and updatability <laughs> with its STM32 microcontroller inside. Um, to upload a new firmware onto them, but uh, that just at the side of things to yeah unscrew or open it up. We will first need to open up the bottom and we'll be greeted with this um, ball bearing and four more screws that we can also unscrew. Which uh, goes like that. And now we should be able to pull the rest out. And first of all, we have this 18650 cell and this stepper motor as well. And if we take a look inside now, we have the PCB popping out. But let's first disconnect a bit more parts and we can see two more screws which are holding the camera inside so let's also open them or getting them out like so and now we should be able to pull the full contraption out and we are yeah greeted with the main pcb let's zoom in a bit for once we can see this pcb where we have let's get some pointy stuff and ULN2002 i think this is a transistor array we have the main processor a charging IC, a voltage regulator, 
And on the bottom is not so much, except the USB-C connector, which is only a charging type. And as you may have seen already, I soldered a bit around here already, as we have these nicely labeled debug pins, which are um, D, M and DP. And generally these are for USB, so data minus and data plus, which I connected to the PC. And after turning on the device, it was revealing a so-called CSK viewfinder description via USB. No driver was found, but by looking a bit deeper and Googling a bit more, um, there was this Listen AI um, stuff popping up, which has a more or less um, older SDK somewhere flying around. And this um, chip itself is, as far I saw, the CSK 6000 series or 6 CSK 4000 series that is used inside here. And this SOC, the CSK 604, is just generally marketed for this exact, uh, this exact use case, like a camera following device or like an audio processing device. And it must be very, very cheap to produce it as this whole yeah, device is at the 10 euros mentioned earlier. And it's overall quite interesting yeah, to see such such a device and such advanced tech. Since it's not connected to anything or to the outside, it is very secure to use it. I mean, CN Law would not uh, agree to it, but that's uh, another topic. And yeah, it's not so much worse to tinker around even deeper and try to flash another firmware on here because today with the ESP32 and camera usage it's just the same yeah range of parts or price not in such a compact form factor but you have everything open up without needing to reverse engineer it and yeah it's that way you can just use the ESP32 solution or similar. It's still nice to see such a yeah more or less useful device out in the field and having it yeah working so so well.